And welcome back. Huge changes are coming to our U.S. housing market as mortgage rates have more than doubled since January 1st of this year. On top of that, housing inventory, or the number of houses for sale in the U.S., has now increased over the last nine weeks in a row. I'm going to talk about some implication of what lies ahead because I'm going to talk about what we're seeing right now in the U.S. housing market, and that gives us some indications of what lies ahead uh, with our U.S. housing market here. So let's go ahead and dive right in. I have a lot to share in today's video. And of course, if you guys get any value in this video uh, whatsoever, then please hit the like button. I greatly appreciate that. So let's go ahead and dive right in. This is a weekly um, update I provide for you guys ba based on data from Realtor.com. Uh, Realtor.com shares a weekly housing market update. They also provide um, some analysis. And just like in my previous videos, I uh, actually didn't even read their analysis. Um, I actually want to provide my own analysis based on their data. So here's their uh, update here, which again, I haven't even read. Instead, go to uh, realtor.com uh, slash research slash data. It takes this website right here and click on this link right here, which more or less takes you to this uh, data right here. And don't be scared. There's a lot of uh, numbers and percentages here, but I'm, I'm gonna walk you through this regarding uh, what we're seeing right now in the U.S. housing market and some very big changes uh, that have occurred over the past couple of months. And then stay tuned uh, toward the end of this video because I'm gonna be sharing my uh, a summary in today's video, but also provide some uh, predictions of what potentially may lie ahead. And here's what's happening right now with the US housing market regarding home prices, uh, which is the median listing price or, or asking prices for people listing their houses for sale, um, housing inventory, which of course is the total number of houses for sale compared to one year ago, uh, new listings, days in the market, as well as the number of price reductions, as well as the share of price reductions as well. So let's first talk about asking prices because over the past uh, few months, uh, it's been more or less kind of stagnating uh, in the range of 13% down to about 11% uh, gains on a year over year basis. However, though, as a note right here, uh, we saw a slight decrease over the past three weeks uh, compared to one year ago. All these numbers here are uh, asking prices compared to one year ago. And over the past few weeks, that has actually been decreasing, which is what we should be expecting though, because uh, during this time of year, our housing market tends to slow down and we tend to see not as much price growth uh, over the next couple of months here. So it's entirely normal to see that, but also due to a demand decreasing, when demand is decreasing, we can't have home prices uh, increase as well, right? And by the way, I'm also gonna be sharing how this week compares to previous years going back to 2017. So I'm gonna be sharing how this week compares to 2017 through 2021. So stay tuned for that. Let's also talk about active listings, which of course is housing supply. Because last week, that increased by 45.2% on a year over year basis. This actually agrees to what altosresearch.com is reporting as well, because based on my analysis right here, uh, inventory has increased, according to Altos, by 177,000 houses uh, from one year ago, and that's a 45% gain uh, compared to um, November 12th, 2021. So the gains uh, reported by Realtor.com is on par with what altosresearch.com is also reporting as well. And also as a note right here, this 45.2% increase on a year-over-year -year basis for housing supply is the biggest yearly gain so far this year. Uh, last week was actually the biggest week that we saw uh, at that time, a gain of 42.3%. That was also uh, the biggest gain we've been seeing so far this year. Uh, but now at 45.2% increase, uh, that's by far the biggest increase we've been seeing so far on a year-over-year -year basis. It's important to note that this increase uh, by 45% is not due to a giant increase of new listings. Uh, it's actually due to a decrease in home buying demand. Um, it's taking longer for houses to sell. And also um, we're seeing fewer contracts being signed between buyers and sellers. And therefore houses are taking longer to sell. And that's why we're seeing this increase of housing supply. And speaking of the increase of housing supply, um, housing supply has been increasing on a year over year basis now for nine consecutive weeks which is a pretty eye-opening because we've been seeing a decrease of new listings for quite some time. Again, this increase of housing supply is due to a decrease in demand and not due to a giant increase of new listings. In fact, we're seeing just the opposite because for the past, what is this? For the past seven weeks, we've been seeing double-digit decreases on a year-over-year -year basis in new listings. And on top of that, over the past, 
what is this, 19 weeks, we've been seeing fewer new listings compared to the same time period in 2021. Now this is a pretty remarkable trend because we've been seeing inventory growth uh, over the past uh, nine weeks and this is despite the fact we've been seeing fewer new listings uh, hitting the market compared to last year for the past 19 weeks in a row. And on top of that, for the past seven weeks, we've been seeing double digit decreases in the number of new listings hitting the market. One thing I do want to mention regarding uh, new listings is that it's entirely normal to see fewer new listings in the second half of the year, especially in November and December. But keep in mind though, these are year over year changes though, because uh, this is the same time period right here. This most recent week is for the week ending November 12th, 2022, compared to the same week in 2021. So down by 17.7% .7 compared to the same week in 2021. So as I note right here, we're starting to see some seasonality of our housing market, meaning fewer new listings uh, hitting the market, but also it's more pronounced this year compared to last year. And one more thing I wanna mention regarding new listings in the US, uh, again, decreasing by 17.7%. .7%. That's on par with what Redfin's reporting as well. Uh, there's some kind of a time period changes because uh, Realtor.com uh, provides updates compared to one week ago or weekly updates compared to one year ago, uh, whereas um, Redfin reports uh, the averages over the past four weeks compared to one year ago. Anyways, it's just, I kind of want to look at um, how one company reports information, how that compares to other companies, uh, because we want to see uh, if that's kind of like comparable to what other people are saying here. Uh, but new listings down by more or less 18% is on par with what Redfin's reporting, because for the four weeks ended on November 6, uh, new listings are down by 17.5%. And because our housing market is slowing down, it's taking longer for houses to sell compared to uh, 2021. And in fact, over the past uh, 16 weeks, it's taking longer for houses to sell compared to the same time period in 2021. So right now, for the week ending November 12th, it's taking eight days longer to sell a house compared to the same week in 2021. And as I mentioned in previous videos though, uh, this is based on houses that actually have sold. In other words, the sale has been finalized though. So these, this is definitely a lagging indicator, you know, what our housing market was like, you know, one or two months ago when the offer was accepted by the home seller. So in other words, because this is a lagging indicator, I wouldn't be surprised to see this number continue to increase uh, like it has been. Uh, because back on uh, July 23rd, or as early as July 23rd, um, houses were selling for the same time period uh, one year ago, but has been increasing ever since then, and now it's taking eight days longer. Which, by the way, this agrees to what Redfin's reporting as well, because median days in the market uh, nationwide, according to Redfin, it's taken about seven and a half days longer to sell a house compared to 2021. This is because Redfin's reporting that's taken approximately 35 days to sell a house uh, right now versus approximately uh, 27 days back in 2021. Okay, let's change gears slightly and talk about the number of reduced price listings compared to 2021. Because look at this, a giant increase uh, last week as well as the week before. So for the week ending November 12th, uh, the number of reduced price listings compared to 2021 is up by 102.4%. In other words, the number of reduced price listings has more than doubled compared to one year ago. And by the way, by my analysis right here, at 102.4, that increase compared to last week or compared to one year ago, this is actually the third biggest uh, increase we've been seeing so far this year. And last week was actually one of the biggest as well, uh, a gain of 105 or 104.5%. And the biggest biggest increase we saw so far this year was back on June um, 18th when the increase was 110.1%. But wait, there's more because this number here has been increasing in four out of the last six weeks right now. What also really stands out to me is that this giant shift in our housing market that we've been seeing ever since more or less May of this year, that's when we had um, all time record highs for home prices. And also back in June was the first time we saw home prices actually start to decrease. But look at this because the share of reduced price listings or actually the number of reduced price listings, again, uh, more than doubling compared to one year ago is so much different compared to the first part of the year. Because for the first um, three months of this year, we saw decreases in the number of reduced price listings on a year over year basis in the range of a decrease of 3% all the way to about 31% on a year of year basis. So during that time frame, for again, for the first three months of this year, we saw decreases in the number of reduced price listings. And now more recently, it has been absolutely skyrocketing. 
So that's a percent change in the number of reduced price listings. But let's also have a look at the share of reduced price listings. Because according to Altos, um, for the week ending November 11th, uh, approximately 43% of all the houses listed for sale have already had price reductions. So four every 10 houses uh, listed for sale nationwide have already reduced their asking price. And compare this to uh, May 13th, which is more or less uh, six months ago, the share was approximately 21%. That means the share of reduced price listings uh, has about doubled in the past six months. Now, of course, that's a lot because over the past six months, that share has doubled, which is a very big uh, increase in a very short period of time. But I would be doing you guys a disservice by not mentioning this as well because uh, this is also something I noticed when I was doing my analysis as well because the share of reduced price listings has only increased three percentage points in the last two months. This means approximately two months ago, the share wasn't uh, 43%, it was actually only 41%. And so uh, the growth rate has uh, was really increasing until we hit August. Uh, but ever since August, that growth rate in the share of reduced price listings has been increasing, but not increasing as it once did. In other words, as I note right here, the share of reduced price listings has still been increasing, uh, but the pace has slowed since August. And one reason for this may be this right here, because we may be seeing more uh, home sellers uh, who are pricing their houses more appropriately, given the uh, slowing our housing market right now. What I mean by this is we may be seeing fewer overzealous home sellers, and that's why the share of reduced price listings um, hasn't been increasing very much ever since August of this year. Okay, changing gears again, I want to share how this week compared to previous years, going back to 2017. So I actually looked at the stats from Realtor.com and looked at 2021 all the way down to November 2017, uh, which by the way, um, Redfin, or not Redfin, Realtor.com only provides data going back to July of 2017. So I can't share a data um, previous to that. But here's what I can share with you guys, because here's 2021, 2020 uh, through 2017. Um, obviously, 2021 and 2020 were uh, completely abnormal years uh, because we had such a high demand uh, for housing uh, due to uh, mortgage rates decreasing big time, uh, reaching all-time record lows. Uh, back in 2021 as well as 2020. So back in 2021, uh, rates really held steady at around 3% for the average 30-year fixed rate mortgage. And of course, 2020, uh, rates fell big time back in um, April uh, through the remainder of the year. So they were around uh, 3% as well uh, on average for 2020. So obviously much different now given the fact that rates um, have been around 6.6% uh, uh, to about 7% for quite some time, for a couple of months now. And going back to 2019, rates were actually decreasing. Uh, back in 2018, rates were increasing, but not even close to what we're seeing right now. Because in the beginning of 2018, rates started at about 4%. The end of the year in 2018 at about 4.5%. In the end of November, I believe rates were about 5% in 2018, but overall rates increased approximately a half a percent for the entire year. But of course, this year rates have gone from 3.3% on January 1st now to 6.6%. So rates have more or less doubled uh, since January 1st of this year, which is also an anomaly because we haven't seen really anything like that in quite some time, if not ever. Anyways, look at this, because I believe that in my opinion, uh, 2018 is probably the best uh, more recent year we can compare uh, or seen right now uh, to uh, two years past. So 2018, uh, the uh, median listing price only grew by 7.3%, and now it has increased by 11.1%. So we're not seeing enough uh, home prices uh, decrease uh, to make up for the fact that uh, home buying demand has been decreasing greatly as well. Also back in 2018, um, active listings only increased by 3.5%, which is much different than we're seeing right now, a gain of 45% uh, compared to 2021. And something I just realized, I didn't have new listings uh, in this uh, column here, so I actually had to stop the video here and actually added all this, so I apologize in advance if you guys noticed that this column here was blank here. Anyways, I just add that based on a data from Realtor.com. So uh, regarding new listings, <laughs> uh, Jason Fail, what are you going to do? Anyways, new listings for November 2018 were up by 5.5% compared to 2017. I'll see a much different compared to what we're seeing right now, a giant decrease of 17.7%. Also back in 2018, um, houses on average were selling seven days faster than 2017. Now it's eight days longer. On top of that, look at this. 
the share of reduced price listings, actually the number of reduced price listings increased by 17.3% on a year over year basis back in 2018. And now it increased by 102.4%. Okay, if you guys are still watching this video, I appreciate you. I also wanna provide a summary in today's video because of course, that was a, a lot of information to go over in today's video, right? Uh, so I hope you guys are still watching this video. If you are, then please hit the like button. I appreciate, greatly appreciate that. Anyways, let's talk about uh, my summary number one, bullet point number one. Inventory has been rising for the past nine weeks in a row and rose by 45% last week. The growth is significant given the fact that there's been fewer new listings uh, from last year for 19 consecutive weeks. And on top of that, it's been decreasing or the number of new listings has been decreasing for the past seven weeks in a row. In contrast, this market would look a whole lot worse if new listings were actually increasing greatly, but we're not seeing that because new listings have been decreasing on a year-over-year -year basis for 19 consecutive weeks now. That's number one. Here's number two. Mortgage rates have been above 6.5% every single day since October 1st of this year. This should slow down demand further, causing inventory to rise. So when we see a decrease in home buying demand, that's taking longer for houses to sell, and therefore we're seeing fewer contracts being signed between buyers and sellers as well, and therefore inventory tends to increase when demand decreases, of course. Um, however though, overall, over the past two months though, rates have changed very, very little. So for example, these are rates according to the Morris News Daily, um, as of uh, September 19th, for example, uh, average 30-year rates for people with exceptional credit, of course, was 6.4%. And um, yesterday, at the time of this video, which is uh, November 16th, rates were at 6.6%. In other words, uh, even though rates have been increasing so much this year, there hasn't been very much movement overall over the past two months. So that's number two. Here's number three. We saw a huge increase in the number of reduced price listings over the past month. And also on top of that, the share of reduced price listings uh, has more or less doubled over the past six months. Uh, this is also far higher uh, compared to at least the past three years as well uh, regarding the share of price reductions as well. Um, but as I mentioned though, the growth in the share of reduced price listings has been slowing since August of this year. That's number three. Let's have a look at number four here. Homes are taking longer to sell compared to same week one year ago for 16 consecutive weeks. Again, though, this is a lagging indicator uh, because this is based on houses actually have sold and therefore it's really an indication of what our housing market was like approximately one or two months ago. I expect this to increase uh, in the months ahead uh, due to our seasonality of our housing market, but also due to the spike in rates that we've been seeing. So what are some potential huge changes ahead given the fact that average mortgage rates have been at or above 6% since September 1st of this year? And by the way, this is pure speculation, by the way, of course, uh, my crystal ball broke a long time ago, right? Anyways, number one, uh, more buyers are gonna get priced out of this housing market or they're just gonna opt to wait out of this housing market and see what happens here. Uh, as I mentioned here, there's a 1% uh, rule here. With every 1% rise in mortgage rates, that causes a 10% decrease in buyers' purchasing power. And therefore, because rates have increased approximately 3.4 percentage points, that causes a 34% decrease in buyers' purchasing power. Number two, uh, we still have an affordability issue in the US right now. Uh, for a, an average person looking to buy a median price home today versus one year ago, it's gonna cost them around $750 more per month to buy that same house right now uh, versus one year ago. And that increase of $750 more per month is a 60% increase in your average monthly mortgage payment. And that, in my opinion, is one of the main reasons why we're seeing this pullback in home buying demand. And number three, we'll likely see more declines in home sales and home prices for the remainder of the year. This could be significant though, given the rapid rise in rates that we've been seeing. But as I mentioned right here, rates are the wild card. Uh, rates decreased big time last week, but they have been more or less um, hovering around 6.6% for about a week. So if rates start to decrease big time, that could, of course could increase home buying demand. 
Uh, but of course, if rates start to increase once again, that's going to de decrease uh, home buying demand uh, even further, uh, causing a lot of headwinds in our U.S. housing market, of course. And of course, I'll definitely keep you posted regarding that. And number four, to combat inflation, the federal raise rates or the federal funds rates uh, until inflation is in line with long-term averages. This will increase interest rates for HELOCs or home equity line of credits, uh, credit cards, and new auto loans, but savings rates will also increase as well. We probably won't have too much long-term relief for mortgage rates until after inflation winds down further. And also I, I mentioned here the Fed rate monitor tool. Uh, in regards to uh, the federal funds rate, have a look at this because if you actually go onto investing.com or if you just Google the Fed rate monitor tool, it gives you the street's expectations about what the Fed's gonna be doing with rates or what the uh, future rate hikes are gonna look like uh, for the Fed. So the next uh, next uh, Fed rate uh, interest rate is in decision is in three weeks and five days. Uh, from now, which is on December 14th, 2022. So in that meeting, uh, the, the street is forecasting for the Fed increase rates by 50 basis points because the federal funds rate right now is 4%. And they're forecasting for the Fed increase rates by 50 basis points by a probability of 80.6% and only a probability of 19% for the Fed to increase rates by another 75 basis points. All right, so that's number four. Let's have a look at number five here. We won't see the true effects regarding rates at or above 7% until late November until December stats are released. If we're gonna be relying on, let's say, the National Association of Realtors, we won't have November stats until uh, mid-December. We won't have December stats until mid-January of this year. Now, of course, I'll definitely keep you posted with the latest developments. And number six, subscribe to this for free and my videos take me hours to make. This video took me all, uh, more or less all day to make. So I appreciate you guys watching this video. I appreciate you in general. I hope you guys have an awesome day and look forward to seeing you on the next video.